How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob the Boy, and welcome to all the mounts in the Burning Crusade. Here we're going to cover all the mounts that appear in the Burning Crusade, and how to get them in Burning Crusade Classic. I'm going to try and cover them in the order they appear, mostly. I'll also add YouTube chapters to this, so you can check the progress bar to navigate around easier. With that being said, let's get in it. No long intros here, we don't need that shit. And... Also, just because some of these mounts are dope as shit, and I want them right now. Two new races means two new mount types. Blood Elves get the fabulous Hawk Striders. Yeah, they are just jankumed out chocobos, but they're still great and I love them. You can buy them at Thuron's Livery and Eversong Woods. The 60% speed ones come in four colors. Black, red, purple, and blue. The 100% speed ones come in green, pink, and purple. Alliance doesn't get left out though because Draenei get Elix. Big buff boys. Really nice to have a big mount on ally. You can buy them right in front of the Exodar on Azur Mist Isle. The 60% speed ones come in brown, purple, and gray. The 100% speed ones come in blue, purple, and green. But get the blue one, it looks amazing. For non Blood Elves and Draenei, there is a cloth turn in, and you can buy these at Exalted like all the other racial mounts. Another good way to farm Horde or Alliance rep is in AV. Your AV turn ins may only show up as giving Stormwind or Org rep, but they are giving you rep for all four cities, five cities. I got my rogue to exalted with all four horde cities and got the PvP mounts that way in classic. Didn't turn it any cloth. Also, like previous racial mounts, there are PvP versions of both of these. Alliance can buy a Black War Elec and Stormwind, and of course Horde gets a Black War Strider and Org. The cost of these mounts changes over time, but I'm pretty sure it was 30 Warsong, 30 AV, and 30 AB marks of honor, no eye of the storm ones. And this will likely be the same in TBC Classic. Blood Knight Warhorse and Blood Knight Charger. Yeah, Blood Elf Paladins get their own semi unique versions of the Paladin mount. Alright, it's just a recolor, but it's still nice. The Warhorse is from talking to the Paladin trainer, same as Alliance. And the Charger has a quest like the Alliance one, but it's a little bit different of a quest. Although, still has a hefty gold and item requirement. From there, let's look at two more groups of boring mounts before we get into those real nice ones. Alliance's first flying mount, Griffins. You can buy these in Shadowmoon Valley at Wildhammer Stronghold. They come in three colors, snowy, golden. Golden is the classic Griffin. Looks pretty nice. And Ebon, what? It's green, how is this? Whatever. These only move at 60% speed though, so hopefully you'll never have to go anywhere near these. The real griffins, the proper speed griffins, come in blue, green, red, and purple. Although only the armor changes color, the actual griffin stays golden as it should be. Horde unfortunately gets an even uglier mount, wyverns. Disgusting. They can be bought in Shadowmoon Valley, this time at Shadowmoon Village. The 60% ones come in tawny, the fuck is it, blue, and green. The real speed ones, like griffins, don't change color, only the armor does. Those come in yellow, purple, green, and red. And they look awful. Unacceptable. Scenarian War Hippogriff. The first hippogriff mount you can get in the game, and it is a nice one. You can get this from Scenarian Expedition Exalted. You can get their rep from Coilfang Dungeons, some quests in Zangar and Blades Edge Mountains. You can even turn in unidentified plant parts for 250 per 10 until Honored Reputation. After that, there is another turn in for CE rep. 
This time it will be Coil Fang Armaments, which come from, yeah, Coil Fang Dungeon, specifically Steam Bolt. There's also a prereq quest before you can turn these in that you get from killing trash and steam bolts. That quest gives a little bit of rep too, I think it's 250. I'll definitely be farming for this one. It's not too hard to get and an excellent looking mount, one of my favorites back in the day. Tall books of all types and varieties. So tall books, tall books, I don't, I don't know. Actually come in three versions and two types. All are epic 100% speed mounts, even if some look like they should be 60% speed mounts. Regular riding Talbuks wear no armor and can be purchased in Nagrand. Gardar for Horde and Talar for Alliance. They come in white, tan, silver, and cobalt, because they can't just say blue, costing 70 gold. There is also a war version of each of these. Same colors, just wearing a little armor that increases the price tag to 100 gold. Why even put that cheap armor on there? I don't know. All of these tall books require Exalted with either Maghar if you're Horde or Kurenai if you're Alliance. For Kurenai, there are quests in Nagrand and Zangar. Doing them all should get you pretty far, probably into Revered, I think. For Maghar, they have quests that start in Hellfire and, of course, in Nagrand. To get the rest of the rep to Exalted, you can farm Kill Sorrow cult members, Merc Blood Broken, War Maul Ogres, or Blade Fist Ogres. Ogres are going to be the fastest as they also drop beads you can turn in 10 at a time for 500 rep. And all of those mobs are located in the ground. Although you can also turn in those beads for consortium rep if you need that. Although they don't have any mounts, so we don't give a shit about them today. And the other type of tall book. Dark tall books. They come in a writing and war version like before, but these ones actually come from Hala, no rep involved. You need battle tokens and research tokens. Battle tokens are gained from killing players in and around Hala. If you're in a group, everyone gets credit as long as the player kill grants honor, so no reason not to group up there. The research tokens require you to turn in 10 Oshigun crystal powder samples. That you get from killing mobs around the ground. You can only buy the amount and do the turn-ins if your faction owns Hala at the time. 100 battle and 20 research tokens for the Dark War Tallbook, 70 battle and 15 research tokens for the Dark Riding Tallbook. These are two really nice looking mounts and you will have one Hala of good time farming them. Shit. That was bad. I, I need to pray to Hunter Jesus for forgiveness on that. Fiery War Horses Reigns, the first raid drop mount you'll see in TBC. Midnight is Atuman the Huntsman's personal steed. And very surprisingly, drops from Atuman the Huntsman. Usually the first boss you will do in Kara's arm, he goes down like a bag of shit. Drop rate is low though, estimated at around 1%. Could be a while before you get this bitch. Ashes of Lar. Yeah, you knew what this was. Possibly the best looking mount in TBC, maybe even WoW in general, has an incredibly small chance to drop from Kael'thas and Tempest Keep. Not a lot of people are going to be getting this one. So that covers all the mounts that should be in at launch. Let's move on to ones that were added in patches. Flight form. Alright, not a mount, not a mount, but related. Druids can learn flight form at level 68. They don't need to wait until level 70 to fly. Nice. Regular flight form will be in at launch, but epic flight form was added in patch 2.1 and included a cool quest line you had to complete before getting the flight form. Likely this will be in phase two in classic or thereabouts. There are a ton of perks for flight form over normal mounts like being instant and being the only class that can summon on zoo pretty jealous reigns of the raven lord come on come on we all love this mount it looks amazing it drops off of on zoo with around a one percent drop rate who only appears in the heroic version of sethic halls and requires a druid to summon him that has done that part of their epic flight form quest <laughs> yeah he's a serious bitch to form but damn, he is fabulous. Much like the flamboyant Tall Striders. 
Being added in patch 2.1, we'll probably see this very early, likely phase 2. Also added in patch 2.1 originally were the Nether Bros, the older being Nether Rays. Nether Rays are a daily rep mount coming from Exalted with Shatari Skyguard. The mounts cost 160 gold and come in 5 colors. Blue, green, purple, red, and silver. Very ugly air snake things, but kind of cool. Sadly, there's no real secret or quick way to get Shatari Skyguard rep. You just do daily quests. Most of them are in Terokar, but a few in Blade's Edge with the Ogre Law ones as well. There is an escort daily quest in Skedis you can do that some people miss, but outside of the daily quests, your only real option is to farm mobs in Skedis, as they do grant a very small amount of rep per kill. You can try to summon Terok, a sort of outdoor boss for a quest that requires multiple items to summon. He does grant rep, I think it's 500 per kill, but isn't necessarily that easy to summon. He can drop some alright BOE gear, so you might be able to join in some kills. People want to farm him for that, probably not, maybe. Basically, you're just going to be doing dailies here. Shit. The younger Nether Bro being Nether Drakes. Remember when they showed off Nether Drakes in a lot of TBC promos before release? Then getting to level 70, only to be told you had to ride a shit griffin for six months. Yeah, that was bullshit. But they did eventually make it into the game, and they are really nice. Like Nether Rays, they are a daily quest faction mount, and they come in six crazy colors. Violet, Viridian, Purple, Onyx, Cobalt, and Azure. Honestly, they all look great. Nether Drakes even get a unique wing flap sound because they are so special. Your first Nether Drake you will get for free once you're exalted. But after that, they can't give that shit away for free anymore, so it's 200 gold. Also, like Nether Rays, you're mostly just going to be doing daily quests for your, your rep here. Actually, you'll be doing an absolute assload of daily quests in Shadow Moon Valley to get exalted. The only other way to gain rep is find Nether Drake eggs lying on the ground, or very rarely get them from mining or being mob killing on Netherwing Ledge. They're not common, and if you spent a full day looking for them, you'd be lucky to get between 10 and 20. I remember when I was very close to Exalted, I spent my last day farming, and I got 12. Each one of those you loot, you can turn in for 250 extra rep. The drakes are nice. The data quests suck. Flying machines. That's right. Engineers get two flying mounts in the Burning Crusade. The first is just called Flying Machine. <laughs> that name is creative as shit. So the 60% speed one in is just learned from trainers requiring 350 engineering. Looks pretty nice actually. Requires 30 fell iron bars, 2 adamantite frames, 8 handfuls of fell iron bolts, 5 adamantite bars, 4 elemental c charges, and 8 star wood. Pretty expensive. The epic one though, 8 corium power cores, 8 Bell steel stabilizers, a hula doll, nice, and actually requires a regular flying machine. So you'll still need to make that one, even if you only want the turbocharged one. But it's totally worth it. It just looks fast. Look at that graphic. And the hula doll? Shit. You can learn the schematic from Jaden Smith's mom, Niobe Whistlespark, in Shadow Moon Valley at the Wildhammer Stronghold, even if you're Horde. You can just fly in and learn it pretty easily. She's in the middle of the camp right by the forge. These were originally in patch 2.3, so could be a later phase in classic. Amani Warbear. Very cool mount, attainable only in ZA. It's a 100% chance to drop, however, you have to clear the place before the prisoners go down, which I think it was 45 minutes. The Glad Drakes. Oh yeah, the Glad Drakes. So the Burning Crusade had four seasons, and I expect the same for Burning Crusade Classic. If your arena team was in the top 0.5% of your battle group at the end of the season, you were awarded the Gladiator title, which was not permanent, and the accompanying mount, which was permanent. Four seasons means four mounts. Swift Nether Drake for season one, Merciless Nether Drake for Season 2, 
Vengeful Nether Drake for Season 3, and finally, Brutal Nether Drake for Season 4. We don't know how Blizz is going to do battle groups, so this could be a mess, or it could be great. Probably will be a mess. It's important to know that the top 0.5% applies to all three brackets. So it's not easy, but you do have a real chance at getting one of these drakes if you want one. Put your mind to it and, you know, try your best. And play a, a druid, warlock, rogue mage, or priest. That is also very important. Actually, that's probably more important than the other stuff, but... Yeah. Shit. Alright, now let's talk about a few mounts that are in the game, but we don't know 100% if they'll be obtainable. Swift Zevra. So this guy came out really late in TBC and was awarded for paying Blizz extra money using two accounts. Or at least that's how most people got it. This one was the first mount awarded from Recruit a Friend. It required the recruited friend to buy WoW and I think it was two months of game time, maybe one. We have no idea what Blizz plans for Recruit a Friend in TBC Classic. Maybe they'll bring it back, maybe they won't. We likely won't know how they'll do this until sometime after launch. Raiding card game mounts. That's right, the Spectral Tigers were in TBC. The swift and regular version came from the trading card game. That was quite awful. I bought one pack and I think it would have been a better use of my money had I been mugged and kicked in the nuts. There were also other TCG mounts like the Rockets, Turtle, and the Bear. Another group of mounts we have no idea how or if they will at all make them available. Big Blizzard Bear. If you attended BlizzCon 2008, either physically or digitally through the wonderful, incredible 10 out of 10 satellite television provider DirecTV, hashtag please sponsor me, you were given a code that let you redeem this mountain over IF. Don't know if they'll just give this to people who have it on retail, or maybe they'll give it to people who attend BlizzCon 2022. But more likely in classic Blizz fashion, they'll give it to us if we spend $100 on Diablo Immortal or some shit like that. The Horseman's Reigns. That's right, the Headless Horseman's Mount was also in TBC. But not sure if we will actually be able to get this. It would have to line up with the event on Halloween, obviously. But this was added kind of late in TBC. There's some evidence that it was 2.3, but it also could have been 2.4.3. I don't remember. I know I had the Horseman's Helm, but I don't even remember when I got that. So unless Blizz would put it in during an earlier phase, we would likely only have one chance to get this, the second Halloween event in TBC Classic. So there's a good chance this will be available in TBC Classic, but we can't guarantee it. And that would be the same for the Broom Mounts. Brewfest Mounts, similar to the Horseman's Reigns, we don't really know how Brewfest is gonna line up with Classic but there were actually three Brewfest mounts in TBC. Great Brewfest Kodo, Swift Brewfest Ram, and just regular as Brewfest Ram. The Rams were not drops from Corrin Dire Brew. You had to do quests and other stupid activities to get Magic Mount Brewfest prize tickets. 600 tickets would then let you buy the Ram mounts. The Great Brewfest Kodo was added the following Brewfest, which I think landed in very early Wrath, but the actual mount was in game during TBC. Although I thought I remembered seeing it in TBC, but all the archived info I could find showed that it wasn't actually available until that following Brewfest during Wrath. I'd guess that we will definitely see the Rams in TBC Classic and a small chance we won't see the Kodo, but again, depends on how release dates line up and the holidays and all that. But if there's any real holiday that's worth celebrating, it's a Brewfest. In fact, I've been celebrating Brewfest nonstop, 24-7 since I was like 16. I've always got a drink in my hand. This video alone probably took like $50 worth of beer to get through because it took a lot of time and a lot of work. But you know, I had a damn good time making it. And if you did watching it, hit that sub button, bell, like button, share button, all that other shit. I appreciate each and every one I get. And we even have memberships now. You can check them out by clicking the join button right by the sub button. It is absolutely 
the best way to support the channel and you'll get some really cool emotes plus it's way better than a twitch sub i've got a lot of wow content already on the channel and have much much more coming including streaming right here on youtube so be sure to stick around for that if there's any specific wow classic or tbc classic content you'd like to see be sure to let me know in dim comments right now i'm working on a few vids including an arena one one about phases and in the far future my class picking guide but that is going to be all for this one i really appreciate you all watching and i will see you all for the next one